The grand finale is finally here. So to sum it up, we need to find Anastasia and the bomb. We need to defuse the bomb and find Haggerty to do it. Old Spotty Face is still out and about, but he has a bullet in his shoulder. And we need to get Paul's daughter to safety. And maybe we need to prove Winters is ready to return to field work. Here we go. Okay, so Anastasia just wants to blow Vegas up, and Spotty is now fine with just a bandage tied around his arm. Why did McKnight spit on the carpet? Disgusting. So the casino gives them access to their security center, and the FBI has given them back their clearances. They still need to find Haggerty. Using facial recognition, they spot Anastasia almost instantly. They even say that she's baiting them. What are the odds that's not even the real nuke? It'll be in that shipping container of poker machines they showed us earlier, even though they at no point had a chance to put it in there. Paul volunteers to fly the nuke out a safe distance if they can't disarm it. A nice bit of fatherly love. Rather than the garbage, my daughter is with a boy stuff they were spouting earlier, but more of a, if it comes down to me and my daughter, I'd rather die. So is Paul going to have to airlift that shipping container off the back of a truck? Why do I feel like Paul has been underutilized? Anastasia has a penthouse at the Citadel. Sounds like a good place to watch a blast from. Why would her goon still ask for money if it was a suicide mission? It can't be the bomb. Has Trunk eaten yet? Gomez is going to attempt to snipe from a lower building. What, are they going to lure her to the balcony? Haggerty's thrown his phone away. Why was no one trying to call him? Trunk's getting woozy so he's going to act as a diversion. What the hell happened to that guy's head? Ava and McKnight just go up to the dudes guarding the elevator and basically ask them if it's worth dying over. Easy. Trunk leads the goods into a kitchen. I totally thought he was going to stuff his face and go Popeye style on these fools. But nope, he's got his butt handed to him. The elevator goons let Anastasia know that Winters and McKnight are on their way up. So she pops the breaker. Pretty sure he can't do that, but whatever. Uh-oh, there's another sniper. Are we going to get sniper versus counter sniper? Or is Paul going to spot him from a mile away? This penthouse thing needs to be over soon if we're going to have time to find the real nuke. Oh wait, he did go full Popeye. Where did this food come from? There was none in there before. Paul's found his daughter with help from Maya and told her in blast to get out of the city. Problem solved. One plot point down. Gomez gets snuck up on by someone and it's the ex-fiance of the chick she was... The lesbians bang? He tracked that bird's phone. Somehow it gave him the elevation reading too. Anastasia's sniper must be a rookie cause he's only winged this dude. Somehow he managed to get his jacket off over a shot shoulder. But it must have been one of those painless penetrating bullets Maya was shot with. This poor bugger gets his finger blown off and Gomez takes the sniper out. Winters and McKnight are climbing the elevator cables when the goons start prying the doors open with a fireman's axe. They hide and McKnight gives her a big smooch and says, for luck. A possible Star Wars reference? So they have a firefight in the elevator shaft. They'd be deaf as anything. They shoot one who falls to his death. Then McKnight grabs the other in a chokehold and rides him into the shaft. There's no way they're not all dead. But he'll have cushioned his blow with the two bodies. No doubt. Why didn't Anastasia send the rest of her goons? I guess she seems to want an audience. Winters makes it to the penthouse and is immediately taken hostage. Good work. What, was she going to take on the entire room with an axe? So now Anastasia has Winters' earpiece. Paul has the weirdest sunglasses on. Almost as if the reflection was showing the camera crew and that he was on the ground. Same with this limo driver. But I guess that one was just the camera rig. Limos don't fly. Although in modern media, Haggerty's leaving in the limo. 32 minutes until the nuke blows and 25 minutes of showtime left. Are we going to end up with the last minute of countdown taking 10 minutes? I really would have thought we'd have discovered the fake bomb by now. McKnight lived. Who could have guessed? Amazing. And so did the guy he fell with, who is ready to fight again. Nothing has any consequence in this show. So they fight. And the elevator reboot, which should have had at least 10 minutes left, is now completed. The elevator raises and there's a set of random spikes at the top of the elevator shaft. Seriously, it's like some sort of torture device. Winters talks to Anastasia like she's cracking the Enigma code, telling her grunts that she never intended to evac, that they're all stuck here with the bomb. I figured that would mean they'd change sides to avoid death, but they just keep fighting. They fire an RPG at Paul's helicopter from point blank range and miss, but it streaks off into the sky and disappears. Winters chases Anastasia onto the rooftop and grabs her left arm, but the reverse shot shows her holding her right, Oops, how much money did you have on Gomez shooting the tip of the next RPG? But Paul uses a flare gun to... I thought it was to lead the heat-seeking missile away, 
but that's too stupid. Instead, it detonates the RPG. Whatever. Terrible fight sequence here with people telegraphing their punches and the goons holding off on firing because they might hit the boss. Dudes, it's a suicide mission. Kill them both. But Winters gets the upper hand and is about to be shot when Trunk takes out one of the goons after having run up 50 flights of stairs. The other goon has the drop on him and doesn't shoot until he's jumped the balustrade. The goon then turns his attention back to Winters but he gets an axe in his back from McKnight. The music sounds like it should be the triumphant rise from the grave but we already saw him survive the fall, show? Paul's up to take the nuke to safety. Winters asks Anastasia to do the right thing and disarm the nuke. She says, it's out of my hands. Ooh, like literally out of your hands, as in you can't reach it? Shock. Oh no, not in a slot machine delivery. Haggerty just so happens to be driving by the casino that the bomb is in. What are the odds? He asks the driver to pull over so he can talk to the camel. So the bomb was in the same casino they had their party in? Coincidence? Bro, she didn't even have time to put the bomb in the truck. Now you're telling me she hollowed out a one-armed bandit to stuff the nuke inside of it and make sure it still functions? What a load of old toss. Oh, even worse, it doesn't function and the casino still installed it. Genius. So Paul's saying his last goodbyes and Haggerty rides in on the camel. Why? Did the camel owner decide that if he's going to get blown up by a nuke, he may as well spend the last few minutes of his life parading a guy around on camelback? So this is why this bird was singing all of episode 4. So she could come back and sing Buble at the end of the series. Whose willy did she suck? Wow, it was take a cover off and cut a single wire, and with one second on the clock. Who could have guessed? Show ends with a party. We learn that Haggerty can see the goblin as well. I thought it was just a pilot thing. Whatever. Winters and McKnight shag and we finish, literally, with champagne spraying everywhere as they come. Thank god I don't have to watch any more of this. I want to give this episode an extra point just because it means it's all over. Seeing as we wrapped up three major plot lines and about seven minor ones in this episode, I'll give it a five. Of course, they couldn't bring themselves to kill the girl boss. They killed absolutely everyone else. The ending was a touch predictable. The show seemed to lose track of who they had already shown as surviving and then tried to make it a big reveal. All up, I'll give season one of Obliterated a five. The premise was pretty good, which got me to watch it in the first place. The characters were pretty likable, especially Paul. I would have given it higher marks if it wasn't for the reveal of Anastasia as a major player instead of just a prostitute. That felt like the show had lied to us till that point and was not a light bulb moment. It was more of a huh moment. I also hated the bait and switch with Paul going John Woo on his daughter's kidnappers, only for it to be a hallucination. Those two things called into question everything that the show had shown us to that point. Also, this show was hurt by lack of stakes. So many times, people were involved in incidents that were certain death. Helicopter crashes, getting shot in the torso, falling down elevator shafts, only to return the next episode seemingly unhurt. I can see there being a second season, but it would be pretty contrived. This was a temporary team, so they would need to get drunk again. There would need to be another bait and switch. But Netflix doesn't care. They need stuff for their service. I would probably avoid it though. Unless I thought it looked so stupid that I could get some laughs from hate watching it. Anyway, that was Obliterated. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. Did you enjoy it? Who was your favourite character? Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time and have a good one.